How minerals form. Minerals are the natural substance the world's rocks are made of. Minerals are all around us. All of them are solid crystals with a particular chemical composition. Some of the minerals could be very small, you can only see them under microscope. Some could be as big as the tree trunk. Why there are so many different minerals? How they formed? Each kind of these minerals formed under particular conditions in the particular places. There is a big variety of minerals on our Earth. Scientists estimated from 4,000 to 5,000 different minerals just in the Earth's crust. However, only a very small amount of them are widespread, about 30. All other minerals could be found in particular places as a traces, and we can easily see them when they're concentrated in one place in the place conditioned by geological processes. We find the minerals in these concentrations and they give us ores from which many metals are extracted. Even though the minerals are very widespread around the Earth, the large concentration of big crystals are quite rare. That's why we have a lot of crystal hunters, people who go out there and look for the big large crystals. Doesn't matter, they will be very precious, semi-precious or just the widespread crystals. Big, large crystals need a lot of time and space and particular condition to grow. They need presence of this condition for some time, so the condition should be not changed. And they should have available specific ingredients. Therefore, these processes are quite rare. Scientists distinguish about four main ways in which mineral crystals form. We distinguish some minerals that form in the hot molten magma, which then cool down and crystallize. We have chemical waves of formation. Some crystals are modified by chemical processes, or some minerals undergo some squeezing and heating of rocks and subjected to metamorphism. Therefore, let's talk about these four ways closely. The amount of the minerals on our planet form from magma. Magma cools, and groups of atoms begin to come together in the chaotic mix and form crystals. We can see how the crystals grow when the atoms attach themselves to the initial structure. Similar like you see when the water freeze, and you see the crystals growing on top of each other, snowflake or some frost. And also in the magma we have different temperatures and the different minerals form under different temperature. Therefore, first, minerals with the highest melting point form and they crystallize out of the composition. And then other crystals, when the magma cools, grow differently on top of that. Minerals with the highest melting point form first, and as they crystallize out, the composition of the remaining melt changes. Chemicals that slot easily into crystal structures are removed from the melt first. And usually it's the bigger, more unusual atoms that are left behind. In the slate stages, magma, the rest of the melt crystallizes, and it gives most variety and interesting minerals. Of course, they're going to depend on the regional ingredients in the magma and the way it cools. Large crystals tend to form in magmas that have cooled slowly. The biggest and more interesting often form in what are called pegmatites which form from the fraction of melt left over after the rest has crystallized. Pigmatites typically collect in cracks, in intrusion or ooze, into joints in the country rock, forming sheets of rock called dikes. The residual fluids in the late stages magma are rich in exotic elements, such as fluoride, lithium, beryllium, tantalum, and so on. They can contribute to form large crystals, such as tourmaline, topaz, beryl, and other rare minerals. We call them rare just because of that. For example, if you have abundant fluoride in the fluids, the topaz is formed. If there's a lot of beryllium, the beryl formed. Next minerals are formed from water. The water can hold particular amount of dissolved chemicals. If there are too many and the water becomes very saturated, or you can say fully loaded, 
it doesn't kind of accept it, these crystals anymore and the chemicals precipitate out. They come out of the water as solids. And typically it happens when the water evaporates or cools down. When sodium, chlorine, borax and calcium are dissolved from rocks, they may be carried by rivers to inland seas and lakes, which then evaporate, leaving mineral deposition of minerals such as salt, gypsum and borax. So we see a lot of salt lakes because of that. Many other minerals form from the cooling of hydrothermal solutions. So hot water, very saturated with different dissolved chemicals. Often the rain waters are seeping down through the ground and it as well could be heated down to proximity to mantle or hot igneous intrusion. Hydrothermal solutions also come from late stage magmas and so are rich in unusual chemicals. Such solutions ooze up through cracks in the intrusion and cool to form thin branching veins. We have types of minerals they called alteration minerals. And many minerals are not very stable and they have limited lifespan. It means they changes fast depends on the changes of environment. As soon they are formed, they begin to react with the environment, some slower, some quicker, and they modified and form different minerals. For example, we all know how our metal things get corroded, oxidized when exposed to the air or oxygen rich water. If you left your bike outside, you know what I'm talking about. Iron minerals rust, like iron nails, turn into red and brown iron oxide. When water containing dissolved oxygen seeps down through the ground into rocks and veins containing metals, it creates an oxidation zone in the upper layers as the metals are altered. Andesite, azurite, and many other minerals form this way. Some sulfate minerals are oxidized to sulfates that dissolve in water. Those sulfates may be washed down through the rock to be deposition lower down as different minerals which become often valuable ores such as calcocyte. We also can distinguish minerals which are remade. Many minerals again become unstable and when exposed to heat and pressure, usually heat and pressure, they will respond by altering their chemistry. To become something different, different minerals. The recrystallization will happen, that's the main condition to call them like that, and it's typically linked to metamorphism. We will say if the rock was made by metamorphism, its mineral ingredients are recrystallized, so it's not just need to be changed like previous altered minerals, it has to be recrystallized. So we have to or reheat it or apply a lot of pressure will cause like a temperature change because if you apply big pressure to rock it will cause the heating up process and as a result molecules will move and they will change the crystal. We know that tectonic movements or hot magma metamorph the rocks. Sometimes just a simple burial it's enough to alt minerals. And of course we know that the heat and pressure will increase with the depths. And also minerals can be recrystallized by contact with hydrothermal fluids. But don't confuse it with previous type of minerals. In the simplest recrystallization, the resulting minerals depends merely on the combination of heat and pressure and the minerals in the original rock. However, new ingredients may seep in and it will change the picture. For example, where magma intrudes into limestone, for instance, the magma cooks the limestone, but also introduces new chemicals, new elements, and then create a something different, different mixture. The limestone supplies calcium, magnesium, carbon dioxide, and the magma will bring silicon, aluminium, iron, sodium, and other different ingredients. And as a result, you will have different varieties produced of interesting silicate minerals. Let's look on some of these minerals. Rubies, for example, are very rare and precious gem minerals, and they form when certain oxides are crystallized by the heat and pressure of metamorphism. Fluorite is one of the many minerals that form 
as a hot hydrothermal solution cool and precipitate some of the dissolved chemicals. And these natural pipes, which are carrying hydrothermal veins, eventually completely crystallize to form veins. Topaz, one of the rare minerals that form when the last rare mineral rich residue of a magma finally crystallized. It's happening in dikes called granitic pegmatites. Topaz form from residues rich in fluoride, crystals form in voids in a pegmatite, and sometimes they can grow very large. The mineral world is rich with different types of minerals, however you don't have to memorize all of them, just understand the main processes, how they were formed, different groups, and then within the groups you can talk about the more common ones. That's the best way to have a system how minerals formed or the relations of them to each other. Mineralogists have a lot of tables where you can look at or other ways how to distinguish minerals. If you are interested in this, I'll make more video about minerals.